PK in the universe here. I wanted to do a quick video response. I haven't done one of those in a little bit. Um, it's to the Ever Canadian, also known as Pete. He used to be called OEV Pete back in the day, and he had a different channel. And I think he's got his uh, Pack Opening Pro channel as well. But anyways, yeah, I'll leave a link to Pete's video. Anyways, I wanted to talk about the topic of is the Evercade a shovelware machine? Is the Evercade VS, the Evercade EXP, like this Evercade ecosystem, is this a console for shovelware? Let's talk about that. Let's talk about what is shovelware. Shovelware is a term that kind of gets used for like every bad game pretty much, but that's not actually what shovelware is. Shovelware is oftentimes low budget, low effort, just poor quality games, you know, that were designed to make a quick buck. Typically, the games were designed to make a quick buck. There's a lot of examples of shovelware. For example, a lot of the free-to-play cell phone games, especially games that have like a 2000s, early 2000s kind of look to it, you know, just real, you know, low effort, low graphics kind of thing. That would be like shovelware. Kind of like the Intellivision Amico. Come on, you guys knew I was going to say it. Yeah, the Intellivision Amico. Oh, man. <sighs> like... I hate to say it, but a lot of those games look like they were made by a college freshman who was just getting into game design. No offense, but that's just how a lot of them look appearance-wise. That doesn't mean they were poor quality games necessarily, because I never played them. Most people never played them. And a lot of the people who do play them seem to think they were an authority on the topic, even though if they only played it for a few hours, it's not like they did you play any games to completion. Do we know what games were completed? Nobody knows, really except the people who made the games, obviously. You know, I still would have loved to have seen Cloudy Mountain and Night Stalker get, you know, put on the Amico, and I still want to see them get put on something. That would be great, but yeah, I can understand why there's people, based on the aesthetics and appearance of those games, that people thought, yeah, the Amico is a shovelware machine. There's a lot of people who had opinions about that, so that could be looked at as shovelware. A lot of movie and TV show licensed games are often tied to shovelware, and there are some definitely some examples of that. Uh, for example, Batman Forever is a terrible shovelware game. I'm sorry, but it is. It's an asset flip. Asset flips oftentimes can be shovelware. Um, basically, Batman Forever on the SNES basically was Mortal, the Mortal Kombat 2 engine, but it was a beat-em-up, which makes absolutely no sense. If you're going to get a Batman beat-em-up, get Batman returns i got the fit super famicom version but it's on the snes as well obviously but that's a good version in fact there's no difference really between the two back to the future is also a good example the back to the future games did not play very well especially on the nes if you want to get a good back to the future game another example of super famicom yes yeah, super back to the future 2 this game well what can i say about it it's okay it's middleware really it plays kind of like a sonic game a little bit but uh yeah fun game so there's a lot of different examples of games that were like movie tie-ins or whatever. Another one I really like is people don't talk about this game at all. This one will surprise you guys. Madagascar. You're like, Madagascar, that game looks like crap. It's definitely shovelware. I also think there's certain games that are designed for an intended audience. For example, I particularly do not enjoy this game. I don't like this game. So why do I have it? Well, I bought it with my son in mind because he really likes the Madagascar movies. So I was like, oh yeah, I'll get that for him. Why not see if he likes it? And he's loving it. It was designed for someone his age. This was designed for a child in mind. The game Stray is really popular right now. A lot of people are talking about that. There's a buzz about the game Stray on PS4, PS5, I want to say. Yeah, is it on PC too? I think it's on Steam, maybe. Yeah, I think it's on uh, PC and Steam. But uh, yeah, Stray, really popular with a lot of the kids nowadays. Here's a game you guys might think is shovelware just by looking at the cover, and it's called Dog's Life. Dog's Life is the stray of its day, and the game, the graphics are just terrible. I mean, just really, you know, rudimentary PS2 graphics. And But it plays, you know, it's one of those games where you're, you're a dog, and you run around, you do missions and stuff like that. It's really interesting. It's actually rated T, which you would think to look at this game it wouldn't be rated T. I did a little research on why it's rated T. It's basically because of the ending, I guess, is kind of messed up. So, but yeah, you would think that game is just pure shovelware. There's a lot of games that get labeled as shovelware that are actually what uh, was it Metal Jesus calls hidden gems and whatnot. So, yeah, there's a lot of people who like Metal Jesus. Of course, there's a lot of games on PS2 that were also 
either ported or simultaneously released on the Wii. And the Wii oftentimes is known as a shovelware console. There's a lot of people who make the argument, there's only a hundred good games on the Wii, you know, and there's maybe, a, you know, 900 terrible ones, you know, it's just a shovelware console. Who really knows if that's really true? Because who's played all 1,000 Wii games? Nobody can really know that for certain. But I'll tell you what console has a lot of shovelware on it. The Nintendo Switch. That eShop is just filled with so much junk. You, c you can't even tell what's good and bad. There's no system to really figure out what are actual good games on there because there's just countless thousands. No matter how many shovelware games are actually on the Wii, it's nowhere near compared to what the Nintendo Switch has. But the Nintendo Switch is portable and has a lot of quality games on it, but it's hard to find them sometimes. So. But we're not talking about the Wii and the Switch. We're talking about the Evercade and the Evercade VS and Evercade EXP and all the Evercade ecosystems. We're talking about that. Are these shovelware con is they a shovelware console? Well, we don't have those cell phone games on there, though I'm sure some people want those Amico games on there. Pete might actually want those games. I believe he made a video about that as well. We don't see a lot of movie tie-in games at all really on there, so you can't say that. Are there low effort games? You know, low effort is Definitely a matter of perspective. Like, let's go back and look at uh, E.T. Yeah, E.T. on the Atari 2600. Everybody says that game is, you know, the ultimate example of shovelware. But it was made by one guy, and he only had, like, six weeks to make it. And if you talk to the really hardcore Atari people who, you know, grew up playing it, they'll tell you probably, it's like, you need the manual to play this game, otherwise you're not going to know what you're doing. There's a lot of people who will tell you that, you know, they actually like E.T., especially, like, if the old school folks, you know, or maybe they grew up with that version of Pac-Man. That was the only Pac-Man they ever had, and they had fun with it, you know? It's not the best version by any stretch of the imagination, but those games would have been called shovelware, you know, and they're easy and cheap to find. So, I mean, I think low effort is definitely a matter of perspective. And there's a lot of um, indie devs who've put games on Evercade that they were just that one guy who worked on it, and they put all their time and thought and passion into it. So when people say that those are just shovelware games, that kind of pisses me off, honestly, because I've, well, I'm still trying to make my own game. I'm still working on that. It's, I've kind of taken a little bit of a break from it, but it's hard. It's so freaking tedious. You know, it's just hours and hours and hours of work. You can't say design. I mean, yeah, you could make a really quick game fast, but yeah, it's like how much how much time is what is really low effort? It's a matter of perspective. I mean, we think we know low effort as in from the perspective of the viewer, of the gamer, of the person playing the game. But you really don't know unless you've really designed a game what truly low effort is. It's hard to say. Is there filler, though? Is there filler on the Evercade? Oh, definitely. There's some games where I'm kind of like... I will never play this or that type of game. You know, it's just not for me. But some other person could be like, that is my favorite game ever. I have fond memories of that crap. You know, it's just... But overall, do I think the Evercade is a shovelware machine? I really don't, honestly. Does it have some games that I would consider filler for me that don't mean much to me? Yes. But to another person, they mean everything, too. So... It's definitely a matter of perspective. There's definitely something there for everyone. And, it, you know, it's a console that embraces retro games or old school games and definitely games of that call back to a different time. So it's designed for that audience. I don't personally think Evercade is a shovelware machine. So that's my thoughts. What are your thoughts? What do you think the Evercade is? I'm going to regret asking that. Comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching and stay awesome in this universe. Thanks. Bye.